So up next, we have our friend BZ. So BZ is a Filecoin Foundation grantee, and he's also heavily active in the Flow ecosystem. Uh, and for those of you that, that uh, may or may not know, uh, Flow was the blockchain developed by, by Dapper Labs, uh, which was the creator of the, the CryptoKitties project back in 2017, which was sort of the first kind of NFT project that you know, was so successful that it ultimately kind of like just clogged up the entire Ethereum blockchain for a season there. And then the Flow blockchain was created basically as a almost specifically sort of optimized to uh, optimize for these types of use cases for uh, kind of NFT and gaming types of use cases. So um, with that, uh, BZ is going to kind of tell us a bit about the, the intersection of all these things. And uh, go ahead. Thank you, Aaron. And yeah, thank you so much for having me. Like, it's an honor to be here and like talk to you all. Um, yeah, so I come as a Flow ambassador, a Filecoin, a grantee, and also a Mockerverse NFT holder. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to just like talk about how Flow, Filecoin, and Mochaverse by any Mocha brands like simplify the gaming experience for casual players. But let's start with just looking at the mission. The mission hasn't really changed for the last like five years, which is driving mainstream adoption of Web3. Why? Well, because we believe that a more open internet of freer internet is like a better like. Basically, it's just like a better place for creators and communities. And why do we specifically like focus on gaming? Well, gamers, they have like this natural uh, affinity towards uh, digital ownership. We already have concepts such as virtual currencies and virtual identities. So it's a much easier like audience to tap into. And uh, based on like, yeah, the previous like yeah, couple of years, it, this seems to have held true such as like Axie Infinity. But we also have to talk about like mobile because you can't really have mainstream adoption without mobile adoption. Um, the technical barriers has been quite real with mobile. It has been quite difficult to implement like great user experiences. Um, Ethereum has just like recently have like, you know, a standardized way called account abstraction. And now like the whole Ethereum community is basically like working and starting their journey on creating better user experiences and get to mobile. Uh, whereas on Flow blockchain, we have something called hybrid custody. And uh, yeah, let's uh, try to take a look. So essentially what we want to do is like create this wallet user journey. Um, we could start with just talking about, well, how does it look like currently, the current state? Um, it's usually like this, where you create a like MetaMask wallet, something like that. You have to fund it with some cryptocurrencies, either through an exchange. You probably have to do some KYC, uh, and then you get to a, then you're able to actually purchase like something like NFTs, and you have to connect your wallet on different marketplaces, and then you get to like yeah, trade them. Um, so the wallet onboarding experience is different, right? What we want to try to do there is like making it as natural and frictionless as possible for Web two users as well. And what are they used to? They're just used to like signing up with a simple Google uh, account. And immediately, they should just be able to pay with credit card, like such as using Stripe, um, and then like buy NFTs with it without having to hold any cryptocurrencies themselves. Um, and like the, the user experience just has to like feel seamless. So how could we do that? Well, we, we do it like with the wallet onboarding by basically having the back, the back end uh, signing transactions on the user's behalf. That way, the user doesn't really have to know anything about the blockchain or transactions. Um, and then, like, when the user is ready, well, they can choose to have a self-custodial wallet connected to their current account, and that way they can get, like, the full promises of Web3, which is, like, true ownership, like, being able to move your assets around as you want, like just doing whatever you want with your assets, whether it's trading or whether it's just, yeah, holding. And yeah, that, that suddenly allows you to like have this kind of like easy onboarding. Um, so by looking at, at a case study, we have something like Wanda Arena. It's a hackathon, hackathon submission that me and my team built. It's a mobile auto battler on-chain game where essentially we have, uh, well, we can start just talking about like, why did we do this on chain? Uh, so the, the reason we did it on chain was because we really, truly want to like, 
like we truly believe in the like the promises and benefits of composability, meaning like building on top of other games. Um, so that's one thing. By by having all our game logic on chain, it allows anyone to just like build like freely on top of our game and create their own experiences. We have like this whole like creator like this whole opportunity with a creator economy. We have a bunch of modders who essentially want to like just create their own experiences of their favorite games. But currently in Web two, the incentives don't don't really like align because the game studios don't get like a penny out of like the value from there, and they just like subtract some of the users. Whereas in Web Web three, we actually have solution that can like align all incentives. Uh, so that's something that really excited us and why we wanted to build on-chain games. Another thing is just, if you look at like the iceberg of adding multiplayer, there's a lot of like complexity involved, but the blockchain, since it's so open, it just makes it much easier to build on-chain games and like add multiplayer as like a default. Uh, but not only on-chain gaming is what excited us. Like we also implemented the wallet onboarding experience but it essentially made it possible for us to not only have it fully on chain, but also make it feel as a normal Web2 game that could actually just be enjoyed without knowing that you're actually using blockchain technology. Uh, so this is something that really excites us. And the question is now like, if you're interested in, in onboarding the mainstream at, like as well, well, you can do that because uh, there's a bunch of open source solutions. Um, Flow has recently had this hackathon in like February, where we had a bunch of winners who essentially implemented a wallet onboarding experience. And there you can like just reuse the code. I'm like, you, I would be happy for any of you to just like reach out and connect, because I'll be happy to like help you, like guide you on which solutions might fit you and your project. And uh, yeah, besides that Flow Hackathon, um, so in February, the prize pool was $500,000, and we had like great submissions and many great winners. And yeah, there's an upcoming one that's going to happen in May. So if you're interested, just feel free to connect, and I'll be happy to help you get started on how you can actually like, yeah, create a game plan, a game plan and participate in the hackathon, and hopefully with really, really great results. Now another thing that excites me personally a lot is uh, the Falcoin version virtual machine. Like it's something that has just recently launched on mainnet. And what it essentially allows us, like one thing is something like cross chain. Why do we want cross chain bridges and assets? Well, that's because let's say that we know right now that around 90% of all the value, the trading volume happens and accrues on Ethereum. But Ethereum isn't necessarily the best place you want to build something like an on chain game. An on-chain game requires scalability. It requires that, well, hopefully that people can build on top of it. Uh, and it just requires like things as like maybe no gas, uh, which happens on Flow blockchain. But let's say that you, want, you still want the Ethereum ecosystem because of the network effects. You want the liquidity that happens around Ethereum, but you still need like the solutions that might happen on Binance chain or Flow blockchain. Uh, so this is where like FVM could actually like help you bridge that gap and allow you to just have this like these create these cross chain solutions or use other people who have created these Axela or seller who have created cross chain uh, solutions where you're also able to make smart contract calls cross chain um, and that's how you can actually like build a true interoperable like be fully interoperable with the rest of the ecosystem and allow for much more interesting like use cases for gaming. Another thing that I'm also really excited about to talk, talk with you guys is uh, the Mochaverse. So what is Mochaverse? It's like a PFP collection made by Animoca Brands. And why is this relevant for this talk? That's because Animoca Brands is, like you can't really talk about web free gaming without talking about Animoca Brands. They have invested in more than yeah, 420 different like web free startups and ma many of them like in in specifically ga web free gaming. Uh, their purpose is basically also like educating the like educating the mainstream uh, we got, like through gaming. And why is that? That's because we see that most users actually like web free users are kind of more 
financially aware and tech, like financially savvy than the average user. Um, what we see is that like, yeah, <laughs> a, a great example would be something like a child, right? Like, it's quite difficult for a child to recite history, but if you ask the child about their favorite Pokemon, well, they are able to immediately just like talk about the law and the story around that Pokemon. So in gaming, what we see is that people are more willing to learn something new and take those extra steps. And that's kind of also what we need in Web3 for, for it to actually get adopted. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in on-chain gaming, I definitely recommend like getting into the Animoca Brands network. I myself uh, like recently just like bought a Mocha, uh, like Mocha NFT. And just a few days later, like Yatsiu, he like, as you can see in the, on the image, he's the chairman of Animoca Brands and co-founder. He actually invited me to go out and eat steaks uh, with him in LA. Um, so that was really interesting. And not because of the steaks, but just because like all that knowledge he has actually accumulated uh, like in the space. Um, and something that, yeah, sometimes would surprise you about how different the Web3 like users are contra like versus yeah Web2 users. It's very different. You you when you start a game, you normally wouldn't just like in Web2 you would normally just use paid advertisement to acquire your users. In Web3, it's a very very different. Uh, you really need to understand the culture of it and how to build a community. So besides that. Uh, today, like at around seven, if any of you guys are interested, like I'll also be hosting like a demo workshop where you can try out like some of the wallerless onboarding and hybrid custody solutions uh, that we have, and also like get to know more about like yeah, how to build your own solution or maybe reuse others who have created as a, as a service. Um, and yeah, just like hopefully you'll join the next couple of days, just build cool stuff uh, at Filecoin Network Base. So they have like a nice co-working space and I'll be happy to like, yeah, help out anyone who's interested. And uh, yeah, in regards to like networking thing, like event, all, I've also made like a Google form for people who specifically want to do networking and specifically want to meet like certain people in certain like industries or companies. Uh, so just on my Twitter account, you can like basically find uh, my pinned tweet where you can like fill out that Google form and I'll be happy to like help like connecting you with people. And as a last thing, uh, I also have uh, some colleagues who like hand out like some papers of this, but uh, yeah, I would like to like give you guys like an attendance in NFT or call float. It's something where we can like prove on chain that you have attended this event today. And yeah, uh, thank you all for your time. I hope we will connect. Yeah, so I... Hello? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't expect yeah. to be able to just show this to everyone, like, at once. How's it going? But I guess that also makes it much easier. Um, so, yeah, just to show, like, the wallet is uh, onboarding experience uh, for those who are interested. So the first one is just, like, yeah, how it could work in, a, in an application. Um, so let's try and see if I can probably... Do something like this. Let's say you want to interact with any website. You go into like, yeah, the login screen like this. You sign in with like a show cell account. Um, Probably have to go to my Gmail. Awesome. So now I'm essentially just logged in as a normal user would, right? And I basically just registered uh, in that way. What happens in the backend is that it creates like a Flow Wallet account um, for, for the user. And it essentially allows me to just 
buy an NFT immediately. So I could just go in and let's say that I'll buy an NFT. I'll type in my usual like information. Go like this. Something like this. And the idea is that we no longer need to have the users hold any cryptocurrencies in, in the wallet in order to buy NFTs. Yeah, so now everything is set up and it essentially just allows us to, let's say that this is like a rock, paper, scissor game. So essentially when I like just pick rock, the backend just signs the transaction on the user's behalf uh, and everything happens on chain with this game. So now we are just waiting for a transaction to like basically complete. And then we have like an on-chain uh, like game interaction that just happened. And yeah, there we go. So the transaction sealed, and what happened was that well, both both players ended up picking rock. Um, but that's yes, show, is like an example of how you can like abstract away all these like transactions from the users. Of course, with like greater user experiences, like you could have something else than just like loading. Uh, but you just have to imagine like on the like when people play games, they probably don't want to think about gas fees. They don't want to think about transactions. So you want to create this like a more seamless experience where you can abstract away like the blockchain technology and just focus on the experience. And I guess another thing I could also show is just like how you would connect like a external third, like third party wallet. Because right now it's a custodial wallet. So essentially, all the digital assets are held by the DAP, like the decentralized application. But you might want to have something like a MetaMask, right? Or in this case, um, let's see, like Blockto, which is a flow wallet. It's a way that you can hold your own asset so you can sell it on, in a marketplace or like move it out from the game. Um, and yeah, essentially the way you just log in is like, as easy as that, you just enter like your email. Let's see. And that's, yeah, now you're essentially connected like a an external wallet, which allows you to move assets around as you want. Um, so if anyone has questions, just like raise your hands, because then I can like <laughs> dig into uh, like go into more details around it. Um, another thing is that it was very interesting what Leon was like showing regarding like just having, I've never seen that actually, like a game launcher, right? Where you would just like launch up like the MetaMask a transaction like that. Um, what we did with uh, Wanda Arena, the case study I was talking about, was that we essentially built uh, something slightly different. Um, and yeah, I'm interested in like, yeah, showing that. So now I'm just hoping that I'm not showing anything embarrassing. When I connect my phone. Oh, that got some people's attention. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, movie recording, maybe? Probably had to like do this a few times.
Does it show? Allow. Allow. Oh. Well, let's try again then. Let's see, no. Don't quit. Yeah, if I'm lucky, I'll yeah get to show my my phone and show like demo the game from uh, my laptop. Uh, if I'm unlucky, I probably need to restart. <laughs> but are anyone here like I'm just curious? Like, are anyone besides myself like building games right now, like on chain games? No one. Oh, you guys are doing. What What are you building? If I may ask. A car racing game. Oh, damn. How big is your team? 200 people. Oh, what, what's it called again? Oh, sorry. I can't hear from here. Oh, you haven't launched it yet. Okay. Q3. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I would love to connect and like hear more about it actually. Like Let's see if I can make this work now. First I connect. Yeah, sure. Just a call. Oh you have you have a <laughs> awesome. Oh, okay, okay. Let's yeah, let's do that. Uh, can you can you add me on Twitter? Because uh, I usually use Twitter the mostly. So my handle. Oh. Thirteen million downloads in Web two. That's that's really impressive numbers. Uh, well, this is our second game. Okay, <clears throat> and you're already going to launch in Q3 so first, like this year. Yeah, the first one we have launched was first container game. Yeah. This is okay, awesome. That's really interesting. I'm looking forward to like connect. Yeah. How long will you be staying? Saturday. Till Saturday. Okay, so you'll be back here like yeah. Let's connect. Let's connect. Awesome. Cheers. I wonder. Was it actually Shia No, okay. Yeah, so this is like the on chain game that we built. Uh, we built this in nine days. Uh, and essentially, it has the walletless onboarding experience. Um, This? Oh, no, nothing is showing. Okay. Oh, thank you for just letting me know. I wonder. Okay. Okay. Yeah, now it's showing. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. I might not have. Wi-Fi. Yeah, thank you. I'll just uh, try out this.
It's interesting. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, what this, so the question was uh, for people who didn't hear it, like, uh, in a wallet experience, where is like the digital assets, like NFTs, where are they stored, right? Um, so essentially, what we do is that each application, like, let's say, what they want the arena game or like, the application I showed on the website, right? Each application creates like essentially like their own uh, wallet for the users, right? So they have like a database, a backend. So it's kind of like a centralized exchange per se. You, they could also, of course, use a third party that has this walletless onboarding as a service, right? Um, but mostly, like, yeah, you might just want to like create this custodial system for your users. So for each wallet, like let's say that you start using something like Wanda Arena, uh, our backend creates a wallet for you as soon as you sign up. We actually have some pre-made wallets just to make it even faster for you. Like immediately, right? You just signed in and you have a wallet uh, connected to only you. And then when you buy your NFTs, they go into your custodial wallet. And as soon as you want to like, have free like, self-custody over them, you can just interact with them in, inside the dApp, right? Play the game as you want. But let's say you want to get it out to marketplaces, right? Well, then you need to connect it with just any external, like, self-custody wallet. And there's, like, plenty of them. Um, and hopefully in the future also MetaMask. But then you connect it on Flow, like a block to wallet. And you can, that, that wallet you just connected with becomes the parent or the custodial wallet, which allows you to transfer back and forth between those. Um, so that's what, like, yeah. It's yeah, exactly. So the backend essentially, like, pays the fees. But, like, and that's something with account abstraction, right, that Ethereum is uh, doing now where others can pay, like, the, the dApp can now pay for the user. Uh, luckily on Flow, it's basically non-existent gas fees. Uh, they have like the most like energy like uh, efficient blockchain, so that's why they're able to just like yeah, you don't really have to think about gas fees in general. But there are of course some, and you can easily like just pay for your users, and the users don't know anything about it. Um, yeah. It is. It is indeed like. As long as you have a custodial account, it is a centralized solution. Like, um, a centralized solution that we will have to live with probably for quite some time. Because we're going to see like the most used applications are probably going to be some kind of hybrid form. And the reason is that, well, you do want to be on App Store, right? You have to, that's in itself like a centralized thing. Uh, which where we need access to like the mainstream. So regardless, we are going to like go through that, right? Uh, that's kind of centralization. But at least with the hybrid, that, that's why like Flow really cared about creating um, the hybrid custody solution, like giving the users like the ability to just like, yeah, have actual control over the custodial accounts so you actually can like be decentralized, right? Like, as, as soon as you log in to Wanda Arena um, and have this custodial account, you can immediately just connect your external wallet, move your assets as you want, and no one can stop you from it. And that's decentralization. Thank you. So for some reason, it was working for like one hour ago. I don't know what happened to our backend. Maybe like our backend went down after I played some games. Um, but yeah, so I can't show like the game now, but uh, yeah, I hope if anyone has questions, just like reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, there's like these papers around where you can find like these QR codes. You can also get like the attendance NFTs on the QR codes. And uh, yeah, just feel, feel free to reach out with any questions. If you're building something, I'm really interested in like hearing uh, like what ideas you have or how far you are in the pro 
like process. And um, thanks, for, thank you for your time.